yeah, Patricia is, is one of the users that has been suffering um, and actually working with with uh, a project. We, we got an ESC uh, project uh, with very difficult data set, small particles bound to membranes. Um, so we are, we are prioritizing this. Uh, in, in the Tomo, although you can see there are many other options here, but um, but yeah, they fought a lot with with these, and and I hope they are becoming happier and happier with the CPL with the time. <laughs> well, thank you, Patricia. Welcome. Thank you, Pablo, and thank you, Estrella, for for the introduction. Um, well, hello, everyone. I'm Patricia, and as both Pablo and Estrella said, I'm going to be the one that's going to help you with the first workflow of subtomogram averaging today. So I hope everyone can listen to me fine and can see the presentation. I think that you can see the mouse as well. Yes, we can see it. Great. So, well, as, as Estrella said, uh, the first workflow that we are going to, to see today is the ribosome. This, this data set comes from this paper. Basically, um, they uploaded it to, to Empire. It's this um, data entrance. And within this paper here, they arrived to 13 Armstrong resolution with subtomogram averaging. They also do um, per particle per tilt, and with the subtilt refinement, they reach a bit lower. Uh, a higher resolution, sorry, they reach uh, 8.5 Armstrong. Uh, but again, they use four tomograms and almost uh, uh, 3,000 particles here. We are only going to use one tomo and 500 particles, so we will reach a bit a bit less, as Sister just said. And basically, the, the workflow that we are going to, to do is um, what you can see here. It's a simplification, but we will enter at tomogram level basically because, uh, well, you already see the uh, so how to reconstruct tomograms in the first day of the course, and we wouldn't have time to, to reach at the subtomogram averaging stage if we repeated that from the beginning. So I'll assume that more or less you understood everything, how it worked, and we will enter directly from, from the import tomogram stage. So I hope that all of you have your machines open and can start. Um, I will, ah, first of all, I will follow these two content things. Um, this here that I'm sharing right now in the chat is the, the presentation with each one of the steps that we are going to, to follow with all of the, the values that we will add to each of the, of the parameters. So in or something, if you don't want to ask, you've got all the information there. Otherwise, you can ask always, feel free to, to ask or to go to a room with, with any of our helpers and collaborators, or just unmute yourself and, and ask directly. Um, we are here to learn. And the other thing is, uh, I think, wait, the, the guide, which uh, has everything on the presentation, but a bit more uh, with text. So maybe it's easier for you to read there in case uh here let me i picked I don't the know if in the in the chat that you what sorry Steve? ah great thank you so there you will have everything that we are going to to follow along today okay so let's start new project i hope all of you already know how to to start Cybium. In the icon here of our small Roman emperor. And let's create a project. Today it's day three, so day three in the morning, for example. And let's create it. Here you go. Okay, <laughs> so far so good. I hope. Everyone has followed me up till here. 
we have our new project for subtomogram averaging to work with the ribosome. So the first thing we have to do is to import our data set, our tomogram. For that, we will go, as we have already done previous days, within the tomography section, import tomograms, we double click here, and this protocol should open. Then, the first thing we need to find is where our tomogram is. So we'll click on the folder and look for it within data, day three. And what we want is a ribosome. So here we've got it. Okay, here you should see two, two objects, two data objects. So our tomogram is the one called tomogram bin4.mrc. The other one is the, the initial model that we will use for the picking. So we we'll leave that aside for the moment. We'll start selecting the tomogram. The tomogram uh, bin4, which is uh, dimensions 900 per 900 per 300 in Z. As we only import one tomogram, we wouldn't need a pattern, but we could import more than one tomogram at the same pattern. For example, tomogram.mrc or, or things like that, that all of the tomograms shared. The pixel size is, if I'm not mistaken, 8.68. So basically the rest of the parameters, you saw them yesterday with, with David. So we are not going to go through them. Uh, they are all by default. So if we press execute, we should have our tomogram in process of being imported and it shouldn't last long. So if we click on analyze results, this should open and we will see if we double click it, that we can we can see how this tomogram looks like. It's the same tomogram that you used before uh, yesterday with David, so you should be familiarized with it. Uh, we don't want to see it on slices, but we could. Basically, if you scroll, you would be able to see how it advances along the Z axis of of our tomogram. But here you can see it much better. Um, as you can see, this uh, section here is our Z. We are right now on slice 151. We can go up or down and the content will change. We can also um, use the right button inside of the, of the same tomogram image so that it goes alone from, from slice to slice. And also, uh, if you right click button again, it will stop. Okay, now that we've got our tomogram imported, uh, we'll go with the, the next import. We, in order to, to perform the, the picking, we are going to use a template matching with Eman. For that, we need an initial model. Okay, we need a model that we are going, the same problem as yesterday. Um, I don't remember what problem you had. Ah, great, thank you, Pablo. Um, okay, so I hope most of you have been able to import the, the tomogram without problems. Uh, if you don't say anything, I'll assume yes. So, perfect. Thank you, guys. Okay, so for the template matching, how does this work? You basically give it a template that has to match within an image. So we are going to give it uh, something shaped like a ribosome so that it can find these ribosomes inside. Oh, sorry, Bram. Oh. We are going to use this um, template ribosome to find it within the tomograms and try to 
to identify where of this tomogram are the, the particles of interest. So in order to import, this is a volume, okay? So it will be inside imports. Here we have more import volumes. We double click here and we should see this protocol view. Okay, so we are going to import a local file. The local file, we saw it before when we wanted to, to import the, the tomogram, it's on the same folder. Data, day three, ribosomes, initial model. Um, we made the, the initial model with RANSAC, which is a um, single particle protocol, but um, if we have time at the end of, of the morning, I will show you how you would do this on, on, on real life, basically, because once you start to work with, with your data, what you've got is your tomogram. You have to extract everything from, from this. You don't have a volume, ideally, to, to match with everything you have to create from, from zero. So this is basically for didactic reasons but later we will, we will go through it. So basically everything goes as default, except of the pixel size, which has to be the same one as we have on the tomogram. Okay, so this should be 8.68. Again, we run this, press execute, and as you see, it finishes as well. If you look here on the summary, you will see that the pixel size is the same as the one from the tomograms. And if we analyze, we click on analyze result, this will pop up. We can watch the volume with Chimera X. We just have to press the I here. Sorry, Patricia, there are a few questions in the chat, so oh, okay. it was good to interrupt. So one, one was Dimitri asking if if you could use uh you could take the the PDB um, to use instead of an initial volume. Uh, yeah, I think Villa answered that one. It is possible to import a PDB I, and convert it into density map. Yeah, yeah, it is possible. The my my test what I did I couldn't manage to make it work, but in theory it's possible there are protocols for downloading automatically pdb convert them to maps and and all that uh, but i'm not sure if in practicality we have done it before um, mm -hmm. the other is mohammed saying if you can mention briefly how the tomogram was constructed if well yeah, sure. before, but uh, high contrast or was the noise yeah, filter I... If I don't remember wrongly, we denoised it so that we got more contrast. This, um, we got the, the tilt series. Uh, one second. Yeah, uh, Marie Jose, I will go for it in, in a We got the tilt series from, from the Empire database and we just imported. And as you saw the first day, we started with the alignment of the fiducials so that uh, all the images were aligned among them. And then with a, a protocol of reconstruction, uh, we used this align tilt series to reconstruct it with the 3D, Tomo 3D from Jose Jesus software to, to get our, our tomogram directly at, at beam four. Okay, we normalized it previously. We we downsampled it to to beam four, so that it wasn't that heavy. And for for our purpose right now, which is not um, achieving high resolution, but understanding how this works, it was enough. So, on on a real case scenario, we would have to to go through all steps, right? We stay just at bin 4 because bin 4 wouldn't be enough but for yeah for specific information that's the that's the empire we used thank you Vilas. um i think someone entered in my in 
the one is controlling your machine? Yep. <laughs> uh, Please do, do not be naughty. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, open. Um, I used to write something there, like this is my machine in in the filter box or somewhere. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe already. Is... Hi. My machine. <laughs> maybe well meanwhile uh can you still see properly yes great so how did i fine we click here for import volumes in analyze results and this will pop up so we have chimera x and slices Okay, in order to open any one of these, we need to press on the eye. If we press here with Chimera X selected, we will see this. Okay, I don't know. I hope some of you are already familiar with Chimera. It's basically the, the same Chimera. Yes. Sorry, I was writing in the chat and I couldn't see again the, the this last step. Could you oh, repeat okay. it again, please? Thank yeah, you. Sure. I'll just close this. Um, just the the opening Chimera, right? Mari Jose. Uh, or... Yes. Uh, the problem is that I have in the same computer in the same screen. Oh, I have I this yeah, this presentation and also the virtual machine. So for me, it's a little yeah. difficult to change. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm looking right now, okay? Thank Great. you. So if we have imported both our tomograms and our volumes, if we want to visualize our volume, we will just press here in Analyze Results. Okay, we just press here and this opens. Here it allows you to, to display the output with either Chimera X or Slices. Slices you will just see as each one of the slices of, of your volume. And with Chimera X, if you press the I, it will open uh, Chimera X. Okay, so it looks a bit small. Let me try maybe like this. Aha, yes. Okay, now you should see it bigger. Um, basically, here you've got your volume and here is the um, threshold that controls the the amount of signal and noise that that you see here so if you click on the on the stick here and move it up or down i mean left or right it should kind of be less signal or more, 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 more until the noise is so big that you are not able to see your volume. Okay. So, well, basically, more or less like here, you should see something that could more or less seem like something that one day will be a ribosome. Remember that what we want at the moment is an initial volume to use as a template in order to to match whatever looks like this inside the tomogram okay we don't want something of high resolution here because we it's just an initial model okay um i don't know if you have uh experience with with chimera or chimera x if you have experience with chimera is basically the same only the the parameters are have changed of place okay but you can change the background color here it says background inside the the menu you can have white or black and also if you have some directionality um not really is just um well i'll i'll go through it later uh, for the moment what we want is is 
to reach the the refined stage so that you can see it in in real life okay so if you have uh, all seen the able to open chimera and and to see the the volume if you have we can proceed to to the picking Okay, I'll, I'll assume yes. Um, could one use a volume with a different pixel size in the Armstrong? Uh, I guess you could. The only thing is that it wouldn't match what it's later looking for inside the tomogram. So it might uh, have problems later. Um, I would suggest to have always the same pixel size because later it it comes handy and it's very difficult to to be able to to follow what you have done if everything has a different pixel size that's it rescale things to for them to have the same pixel size okay so let's use the the picking, we have our volume that you, we will use as, as a template. We have our tomogram. Now, the only thing that we have to do is to use this volume as a template to pick inside our tomogram. So the picking that we are going to use today is similar to the one that you saw yesterday with David in Emantomo. It's a template matching but is a bit simpler than the one you saw yesterday and it does everything automatically you don't need to pick manually it works a bit a bit worse than than the component because you are just giving it a template to to follow you are not saying to pick a fiducials or it has more doubts on what to pick and what to not pick but uh, for purposes of showing you how the classification worked yes, uh, later, uh, we prefer to, to use this one. So um, the picking that we are going to use is from Eman. And we should have it, uh, Eman Tomo, here. Mm, picking. If you see particles picking emantomo template matching. Okay, in case you don't find it here, remember that you can always press Control F to open the protocol uh, search box and just press here emantomo template matching. And it should Okay, so if we open here, this will pop up. And as input tomogram, <laughs> we click on the lupa and we select the, the tomogram that we have imported. As a reference volume, we are going to give the volume that we have imported, which is this one here. PWM, import volumes, output volume. Okay, the other one is uh, actually is, is the, the tomogram. So we are interested on the protocol that comes from PWEM. Okay, uh, a way to look for the, the outputs that we, the inputs that we are interested in, we can put our mouse over the box. If we put our mouse over each box, uh, you will see that each box has the name and under the name, an identifier, okay? This identifier is unique. So the way to find the, the box you are interested in can also be by, by this number. So let me show you just here. If you see, we have protocol ID 72 and two. If we come here, the import volumes 
has the identifier 72 and the import tomogram has the identifier 2. Okay, so now that we have selected our input tomogram and our reference volume, uh, here we specify the number of particles that we wanted to find. Uh, we can try to find 500. It might find less because if it finds, if it is not able to match the number of particles that you put here to inside the tomogram, it will just pick uh, up less. You say it somehow. Here as well, our ribosome isn't a symmetrical uh, protein, so we will just give it a C1. And as for box size, the box size should be big enough as for it to fit the, the ribosome, okay? So we will put 50 because 50 times the pixel size, which is eight, almost nine, should be enough for it to to fit the the ribosome inside the inside the box. Okay, so we'll just run our picking and let's see what it what it finds. Meanwhile, uh, let me show you two functionalities of of Cypion. One of these is uh, what is the unit of box size. The unit of the box size is um, basically the the size. Uh, I think this is pixels. Yeah. Yeah. The unit is pixels. That's it. Or boxes, however you want to see it. Um, Dimitri is asking about the group option. Uh, the group option. In the protocol, I think the group is um, you. Ah, uh, here. It, it was slightly explained by David yesterday. Uh, you can identify within tomograms, you can identify different uh, type of particles. You can go for picking ribosomes. You can go for picking uh, different proteins. Um, so maybe you're not, you don't want to focus on one protein. Actually, the DeepFinder allows to, to do this uh, in, in, the, in its interface. You can, you can group them in, in, in groups. So you can you can classify already at picking time the different particles, and this will be just a number to assign um, this uh, this picking to a group. Uh, so you can maybe later go with a different reference, uh, let's say something not a ribosome, and assign group two because you don't want to mix the groups, and then you can they will end up basically with a different color in the Iman picker and other pickers. Uh, they will be understood as different particles and will end up with different um, different colors and you can filter by them as well. Thank you, Paula. So, um, how are you all doing? Have you been able to, to run the template matching? Is it running already for, for you? Perfect. So this protocol shouldn't take long. So maybe in about five minutes, we can click on refresh to, to see in real time if it advances or, or not. Ah, look, it just finished. Great. See, for example, for me, it picked 217 particles when I asked it for, for picking 500. So, as I said, if it doesn't find the number of particles you, you are asking for it, it will just pick less. Ah, great. <laughs> Magical number. Great. While it finishes for, for the rest, I can show you, well, David showed it to you yesterday a bit. Um, well, as 
Anna and I usually work with with projects really big. So in order for them to, in order for us to to not get lost, we we tend to label everything. And we would, for example, in, uh, label with different colors the imports or or the picking or the subtomogram average or some things. So if you want, we while we wait up, ah, yeah. Another thing, I don't know if, if if you have seen it, but you can select more than one protocol together with the control key. So, for example, if I would want to select at the same time the imports, I would just press control and click over the boxes that, that I am interested. This would allow me, for example, for to level at the same time more than one box, which comes in quite handy. So to make it fancy, <laughs> let's practice to to add some color to to the imports again. If you remember from yesterday, uh, we would just have to open the, the labels section here and the managed level window would pop up. So it's empty right now. If we add, it would allow us to put a name, for example, imports, and change the colors. Um, we tend to, to like the um, color pastel because uh, Colors that are like really intense tend to to make a bit difficult to read what what appears in it. Ah, you can select to try. Uh, the control key doesn't work for for you. Pre try pressing the the key control at the same time as you are clicking. With that should do the trick. I don't remember which would be the the short path for users. That might be the the problem. There you go. In Mac. Oh, you cannot type for naming. Okay. Yeah. You could just level one by one. The important thing is that the the color remains there in the the managed levels, so that should do the trick. So here you could just select uh, a color that you liked and just leave it there. We would press OK and OK, and there you have it. So just select the one you're interested in. And if we select it, it should appear. Uh, no. Control T, no. Um, you have it in project and toggle. Uh, levels view or something like that. There, yeah. Thank you, Estrella. You're welcome. Color mode. But anyway, this is just for, uh, as I said, for Anna and me, it simplifies quite a lot our lives to to have everything colored in in the color that we that we want because then uh, it's pretty easy to just look for what you are searching instead of everything green because you get lost very easily. The the boxes tend to, to grow quite fast. <laughs> but great. So I hope that during this time the template matching finished for for all of you. So let's have a look. 
if we press over template matching and we press over analyze results, we should have this window with the list of the tomograms that have been uh, picked. In our case, we only had one tomogram, so we select it. And we will see this uh, viewer that David made. Here you can open, um, right now we only see the coordinates, but if you see all these um, elements on the lower part of the, of the program, show you either the tomogram or, yeah, be patient with the viewers. It might take a bit, although being four, it should do the trick. But still, uh, well, if you press on, on tomogram, you should see how it loads. Or in the slice mode, it, it will open. Uh, as lies and allow you to go up and down in the same tomogram. Um, we have different viewers. We don't only have this one. Uh, we will try to open also the, the viewer for Eman if it sounds, uh, it might be more familiar for, for you, but this, yeah, there you go. See, you can more or less see that the the points which are the particles that it picked uh well they are on on the full size of the tomogram but where there are ribosomes there will appear points there will obviously be be particles that have been mispicked and that's why we are going to classify now if we try to open another viewer let's close this one we don't want to, to save the protocol output. Yeah, uh, I opened by pressing analyze results. There are other ways to, to open the, the outputs, which is uh, if you click on the box here in the summary part, you will see the, the output um, section, you have input where you can see that you have imported a tomogram and a volume of initial model and output, which is the, the set of coordinates that it has picked. So if we right click here on the output, we can see that we have three different viewers to, to see our data, okay? So let's try to open, for example, in Eman. Is, if everyone can see my screen, you, you will see where the Eman data viewer is. So we will just press here. Again, the same list from before with all the tomograms. We double click here. And here you go. Okay, so here we have Eman. Uh, basically, you can go up and down in your Z axis of, of the tomogram in the different slices with the scroll that you have here. Okay, if I go up, it's as if it went up inside the tomogram. If I go down, it does the same. You can see that it has picked quite well. Many, many ribosomes have been picked, but there are some things that it has picked wrongly, right? These are not ribosomes. And in fact, if we look at the particle list that Eman provides, we can see here, okay? Here, most of them look like ribosomes, but there are some that are not. 
So we are going to perform a classification in order to separate the particles that have the ones that that we are interested. Okay, right now our main goal is to clean our data in order to be able to enter in the subtomogram refine fine. So let's close this. And uh, okay, close, not save output. Uh, an important thing here is if you see the output of the template matching is a set of coordinates, okay? It's not a set of tomograms. So the picking, the only thing that has done is to, inside the tomogram, place where the coordinates are. But right now, in order to be able to work with them and to refine them, we have to extract them from the tomogram, okay? So for that, uh, yeah, you could delete the wrong coordinates, but we are going to, to show you how to not do it manually. Uh, a protocol that does it for you. It's faster. Um, you could do a subset. We'll do it later. Let me let me show you. Um, okay, so to extract the, the coordinates, we'll use a protocol called uh, Dynamo Vectorial Extraction, okay? The main use to, to use Dynamo here is to show you that Scipion allows you to go from Eman to Dynamo with, with no problems, okay? With no compatibility problems, so it comes quite handy when you want to try different approaches or to, to do consensus at some time. So to extract the things, you will have to either way, as, as I told you, with the control F, look for dynamo vectorial extraction here. Okay. Or inside particles, you will see extract dynamo vectorial extraction. Okay, either way, you will reach the same place. We double click, we open the protocol with dynamo extraction. Uh, okay, so let's just give it a try. Let's give the input coordinates our output from Eman. The tomogram source is the same as picking, and the box size is the same as we had before, 50. Important here, if you can see, the dynamo vectorial extraction has two levels, one called input, one called preprocess. In the preprocess, it is important. Okay, this is just for visualizing reasons, but it will be much easier for for the user to see. The, the only thing that it does is change black over white to white over black, okay? It makes that your particle looks white instead of black. It's easier to see. So, but it shouldn't change anything of, of the refine. So if we have this, we just press execute and it will run the, the vectorial extraction. No, we do not have a sampler. We, um, basically as we are already working in BIM 4, uh, we, we have made all of this in order for it to be as simple as, as possible and to work um, with things that already the, the machine can handle. The vectorial extraction down sampled, what it would do is to make you smaller the particles that you picked. If we picked, for example, at bin two and extract uh, down sampling by two, it would extract at bin four. But we, we're not going to, to change binning here. So, Basically, 
we are going to wait for it to to extract. I is everyone following here? Perfect, it's finished. Great. Um, so we can analyze the data from the vectorial extraction. Uh, either way, we can double click on the output of the summary or press or on analyze results. Okay. It will take you to the same place. If we press on analyze results, we should see a list of all the subtomograms that have been extracted from our tomogram. So this data viewer, if you want to see all of them, um, instead of in a list, just the images, you can press on the button that looks like a table. Uh, it's called gallery view. If you just press here, it will change from the images of the subtomograms to the table view and so on and so forth. This allows you to have a quick overview of how your subtomograms look like. Okay, we see that many of them look like ribosomes, but there is some noise and some mispecked particles. So let's go to, to proceed with with our classification and, and cleaning of the data. As uh, Dimitri, what you asked before, here you could do a subset of subtomograms, okay? You could select a number of subtomograms that you liked and just go over them, or here in the table view, you could just check or uncheck the enabled uh, check and if you press on subtomograms, it would make uh, a subset. But we will see this better in the in the classification. So let's not rush into it. Uh, okay, the classification that we are going to to go with is the um, the two D classification. Okay. So yesterday, you, as Estrella said, you saw a bit of two D classification with with Jorge a one with Pfizer, we are going to use uh, the one from from Akismet, basically. Uh, remember, our purpose here is to clean the data, not to keep good particles, but to make sure we take apart the, the particles that look uh, worse, okay, that are mispicked, clearly mispicked. So right here, what we've got are subtomograms. Subtomograms are blocks of 3D elements. In order to do the, um, the 2D classification, we need to convert this into a projection of 2D. So what we will use is a uh, subtomo projection from XMIPTOMO, okay? Is inside post-processing here. XMIPTOMO subtomo projection, okay? So we double click here. We will give as input volumes our extracted set of subtomograms. And we will project over Z. Okay, this will make that uh, we will create an, a two dimensional image from the 3D subtomogram as if we looked uh, from up to it. Um, so basically we have here, we would just have to execute this and this, this is what it will do. Okay. It, we've got here. Look. Okay. If we have our 3d volume, we look it from upside and this would create what you see here, this would be seen as, as what you It shouldn't be, ah, there, it already finished. Okay. Uh, okay, so with the particles in 2D, we are already ready to, to perform the classification. So let's go for it. 
uh, this specification, as you as I told you, is uh, is called CL2D. Uh, could you please say again? This is our template. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean, why do we do uh, the subtomo projection? We will use it as a reference or for the pro for the steps? Uh, no, 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 not anymore. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, our initial model is made only for the picking. Okay, uh, we want the the picking to be performed in base to that's why it's called template matching uh but once we have picked the particles we are ready to work just with them without oh, the... that's understood i'm saying about x uh step uh, the subtomo projection this is for the classification or yeah. Yeah, this is in order to convert our subtomograms into 2D projections. We are going to perform a 2D classification. Oh, yeah, that's what Estrella said in a, um, in a presentation. And that's it. OK, so we can search for the 2D Sorry, classification. Uh -huh. uh, Maricos is asking if you can improve the resolution of your screen to see better the options. Uh, I think yesterday they do it, but I'm not sure how. Maybe Pablo knows. I'm not sure how to do it. I think there are two ways. Uh, probably you have a high resolution in your machine, so it's matching your yeah. resolution. Um, I could connect a, a lower wise, resolution monitor. You could increase the font of your of a CPM, yeah. and probably it would be. Yeah, my letter is saying shift plus roll. The but it only positive. works for the for the. Um, I shift. think. I think, Mari, is it about yeah, the the screen of Patricia or your own screen, on your machine? I mean, I think the problem is the the resolution in the screen of Patricia, because yeah. I I make yeah, bigger I full so. screen. Okay. Then, if you go to full screen, there is there are four arrows on the right, and then you can use them to. Yeah, I know. I've done that because I'm following the presentation in full screen, uh -huh. but I still That's can nice. read the, the options. But I could read it uh, yesterday, so I think the problem is in the resolution of Patricia's screen. So is, if it's okay. a way to solve it, okay. okay. If it's yeah. not a way. It doesn't matter. Patricia, I will, I will, uh, behind the scenes, I will increase the font and then I will ask you to. Ah, okay. It, okay. Okay, thank you. Meanwhile, what I can do is. Uh, yeah, Vilas is already. Um, where should I put that? that? Um, copy that. Yeah, okay. Let's show <laughs> how you. <laughs> quite often, we try to avoid this, but uh, at some point, maybe you will face this. Um, in the CPM. So this is a common, uh, Patricia is a CPM3 config um, minus minus show. This will show CPM config file. Okay. Um, and this is a quite simple one. And then you can add uh, different attributes there. Uh, in this case, uh, you can copy what Vilas uh, pasted there, CPM font size equals nine. And probably you want something bigger than nine i would I try, can try I would go, 14. I would try, i would go for 14 yeah and okay. then for these changes to to be applied you need to restart the CPU. yeah okay so you need to save save uh, close close and close this yeah this close this config that file quite often you need to go there and, and add some values like like patricia did um, because we need to know, for example, where CryoSpark is or where is uh, some software installed. And you, this is the way you need to tell the CPM uh, ah, here you go. How, to, how to do it. Okay. But by the way, we lost six particles. Oh. Yeah, these things can happen. Ooh. I mean, it happens if 
it picks uh, way too up or way too down of, of the tomogram. Sometimes it it skips. Uh, don't worry because they it, that means they were wrong particles. So, so really, yeah, basically. So, uh, Marie Jose, do you see? Great. Is it better, uh, Marie Jose? I think it's a slightly bigger, but I'm not sure if enough. Maybe you can also Hi. use the, the zoom functionality by pressing Alt and um, sorry, Shift and Control, and using the mouse wheel to move through the project with a uh, zoom functionality. Okay, but uh, now I can read them perfectly. Great. Thank so, you. thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so with this, we are ready to to perform the 2D classification, hopefully. Um, let's practice with the, the control F um, search. And we would look for CL2D of classification 2D. Also, it's from Equismip. So here you go. It's the second option, XMIP3, CL2D. OK, so we double click here. And here we go. We've got the, the 2D classification with us. Uh, we do not want 64 classes, thank you. <laughs> we will try with 10. For example, if it doesn't find, um, ah, First of all, let me input. Let me specify that the input here is going to be the the 2D classification, uh, 2D projection from before. We just press on the lupa and select the the only um, option available. So we select this. Uh, we select ten classes. If it is not able to find these many classes, some of them will be empty. But still, if we only say 10 instead of 64. Uh, as for Korea analysis, um, this shouldn't affect us very much. OK, Estrella will be able to say this better than, than me. But basically, um, they are like ways to restrict the variability. So, if we would put here no in both of them, um, the classification is very variable. If we specify yes, uh, the, the classification is a bit more stable. And with this, is the stable core analysis is even more stable. Um, basically, this is for, for the wrong particles, the ones that don't, do not fit to, to any class. Uh, the good ones, uh, whatever we put them, should stay within their class without problems. So if we execute this, it should be uh, Once in this step, we can process these subtomo particles. Uh, yeah, actually, we are performing this 2D classification belongs to, to SPA. Uh, because uh, basically what we've got here is a projection. So it's uh, the same type of, of data that we work with in, in SPA. The only thing is that later, in order to be able to enter in the 3D refinement, we would have to return to, to our subtomograms. So, so that would be basically... Yes. Uh Sorry, but yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, sorry, you're right. This is a, what I call SPA lib. And this is perfect for a Scipion because just with this protocol, it's just moving from a 3D environment to a 2D environment. And at that point, you can use any 2D method that might be useful in these cases for pruning the data, which 2D classifications are good for this. And then you can go back with a second protocol that Patricia will show you to your, your 3D environment. And, and this has been done at this stage. We haven't shown you before. You, we can do the same with tomograms. You can convert tomograms in, into slices, into micrographs, and then do picking, 2D picking or single particle picking. But, but it was 
probably we did this at some point because uh, none of the pickings that we are showing now were were working nicely but it's also an option and i think it's a benefit of having everything together we, we have single particle methods uh, tomography methods and you can mix them up um, yeah, yeah totally agreed so i don't know if the 2d classification finished for for you here it has already finished so we can start to to analyze what it has if we click on analyze results uh we of this eye here the one that is over the interrogation mark and we will find that most of the classes are similar to what a ribosome should look like, except for, yeah, here we've got also one class that is uh, less pretty than the other ones. So, in fact, if we press left, uh, right button over the image that, that we want to see, we can open the images that belong to this class, okay? Because these are just the averages of the particles that have inside. So if we open the images that belong here, we will see that they are just not ribosomes. So they are okay. Um, okay, so let's try to do a subset here because we want to keep all the particles except for, in my case, class eight. How should we do this? Uh, we will click over one of the classes and with the control key pressed, we are able to press over the rest of the classes that we are interested to, to keep. Okay. And with this, we, we would have all of them selected. We would just press over the particles button here on, on the bottom of the window. And we would be keeping a subset of particles of 188 elements, okay? We, we can call this good particles. Okay? So once we press OK here, a box will appear inside our tree with the subset of, of the particles of interest. OK, so now that this is finished, I can close this unless... Patricia, could you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, just sure. a little, the selection, thanks. OK, the selection. Uh, you have to press with the keyboard the control uh, key. Control key with the left click over each of the particles that you want to keep. Okay, let's just start again. I would press control and for example here and with control still pressed I would go on to number three and to number four and to number five, uh, I wouldn't release the control key until I have selected all of the keys that I want. All of the classes, sorry. Okay, and then we select them as particles because what we want to keep is the particles that belong to these classes. We don't really care for how the classes look like, but to keep the, the particles that we want in order to be able to work with them. If we lose the particles, we cannot continue in the, the septomogram refine. Great. Okay, but you are not selecting all the good classes, but only yes. a subset? We select all the good classes. Uh, there is some delay for me in, in your screen. Okay, now I see. You select all of the good classes or all the classes that you believe that are good. In case that you doubt some of them, you can always right click on the classes that you don't like and open the images. Okay, this way you will see all the, the particles that have fit into this class. 
we can try to open a different one open images and you will see that there are things that are not yet clean but most of them look like ribosomes so we want to keep it because otherwise we would lose good particles Patricia, will uh, I think uh, there is another way to select? I'm not sure if in 2D classes they, it works, uh -huh. but you can right click on the bad class and say inverse selection or select. Ah, uh, here. Select. Right. Uh, Invert selection. Um, and that way, there you go. Of course, this and, would work only if you have one bad class, but yeah, in this case, yeah. it it works. So. So there you go. And yes, you, you can choose the name that you want. We would just erase this and type hello, for example. And it would be convenient to use um, useful number uh, names in order for you to, to make sure and to remember what, what has inside here. But yeah, you would type the name that you want it, press OK, and it would just appear here. Yeah. Uh, also, you can change the name once you have, if, for example, I've got this name, I've decided that I create subset that is too long, so I want to rename it. You can, with the box selected, press right click, and the second option here is rename. So we will just change to good particles. We press OK and the name changes. OK, these are just um, more aesthetic uh, ideas. F2. Oh, interesting. F2 is a recent addition to rename. Not sure if they will work in here, but ah, yeah, it works also on the, on the Amazon machines. Yeah, we recently added, so yeah, we ah, need to communicate properly. So here we would have our set of good particles that if we check, we will see. If we click on to analyze results, we will see that the, the classes, the only thing that we have kept are the particles that belong to the classes. And we've got 2D projections of all the, the particles that we have interest in, in keeping. Okay, so the, there is one last step to, to start the, the subtomogram refinement before the, um, uh, before all this, which is uh, we've got particles, we've got 2D projections. We need to return to our subtomograms, to our 3D boxes of, of the ribosomes in order to be able to refine in, in three dimensions. So for this, there is this um, protocol from inside of, of Sipion's own functionality, okay, is uh, from Sipion core, to say it some way. We can search for it with the, um, uh, yeah, control F shortcut, and basically is the functionality of subsets. Why do we want to do this? Uh, this protocol, PWEM subset, what allows us is to, given two sets, okay, one main set and one second set, it can look up to the first set and keep the properties of the first, okay? So we can search for our 2D projections inside our subtomogram list and keep only the subtomograms that are contained inside our 2D projections. And that way they would be subtomograms again. So this is a bit tricky if you need me to repeat it again, I, I would understand. Uh, we would look for the full set of items that will be our complete set of subtomograms. 
okay uh, basically is the output from the dynamo vectorial extraction okay the one that belongs to the dynamo vectorial extraction that as you can see contains 211 items what for me maybe for you it's it contains less but or more but it's our last step with the full list of subtomograms. So this will be our full set of items. The set we want to use to find our subtomograms inside our full set is the good particles subset. So we would use the, the lupa again and click on the object called good particles that is our subset for you it will be called as however you have named it but it should be the last one that you i mean the first one in, in the list the last one that has been executed so we can select this sorry patricia yeah hi could you explain again why are we doing this uh yeah the easiest way to find this is with the control F uh, shortcut. No, so, I mean, I mean, why are we doing this step? Ah, okay, yeah. The aim of this step. Yeah, it's the way that we have inside Scipion to redirect the projections of the subtomograms that we have kept, the ones that are nice, that look like ribosomes they are 2d projections now we want to use these projections to extract from our list of subtomograms which ones are the correct okay because otherwise we don't have a way of knowing which subtomograms correspond to to the 2d projections that that we have selected as as good particles okay the problem now is that for entering to to 3d refinement we cannot enter with 2D projections. We need the, the particles in, we need the boxes with the, the 3D ribosomes or, or particles or volumes that we have been selecting. And this is basically the way to find which particles of the ones that we have selected correspond to, to the different subtomograms inside the food set. Okay. Okay. Way, okay. Great. Okay, and instead of applying the, the classification to the subtomograms. So we would just run this. And it should be pretty fast. There you go. And as you see, the output here is again a set of subtomograms. Okay, we had a set of particles. Now we have a set of subtomograms. If we analyze the results, and we click onto one of the of the images we will see that there are slices okay and then we have retrieved the the subtomograms that we had before but uh, we have only kept the ones that surpassed the 2d classification so now we are good to go to enter on the on the refinement basically Okay, so we are on the last stage before the 10 minute break from, from the morning. Okay, the last thing that I want to, to launch before going to, to a coffee break or whatever to, to stand up a little is the subtomogram averaging refinement. Okay, so right now we, the picking that we have done if you remember here is has been done with template matching with emma is a non-vectorial picking so we don't have um we don't have directions okay so we will just use uh emma to to try this the the second workflow the one of the afternoon we are going to use the other other subtomogram averagement um, methods in order for you to to see the difference as Estella said before and 
therefore let's let's launch the me launch it as it takes a bit for it to to run uh let's first launch it and and then i'll help you with with whatever whatever you need so this protocol belongs to the subtomogram averaging part uh specifically is uh emantomo subtomogram refinement although it's not for particular for period it's not uh, okay, we double click here. And what it asks is our input subtomogram. I think yes. Uh, one second, because to make sure, let me check with Control F. We should reach the same place, but just to make sure, because it takes a while. Subtomogram refined, yeah. You. Subtomogram refinement. We reached the same place anyway. Uh, okay. Better to make sure. Uh, as the input subtomograms, we are going to use the output of this last box. Okay. PWEM subset, which is our 188 good particles. And as the reference, we had almost forgot about it, but no, there it is, uh, our initial model, okay? We want to use this one, our PWEM import volumes, okay? As an initial model in order to, to try to find the, um, the similarities with, with it. So we select it. We don't have anything in advance. And here, it is very important, uh, the mass, okay? The ribosome is uh, 3K kilodalton, 3,000. Um, and basically, that would be it, okay? Uh, Eman, I'm not really sure how it does it, but it... Um, refines based to to the mass of, of the protein that you're searching for so with 500 it wouldn't just fit and the rest of the parameters will be by default so if we launch this it should stay running Ah, uh, no, wait, one last thing, one last thing. Uh, let's stop this with left, uh, right button, stop. Why? Because this is a really challenging uh, step. So four threads, it would never finish. Okay, we need to really use the full potential of our machines in order for it to, to be fast. Uh, so let's put 12. Okay, how do we know this? Um, this is just technicalities, but if you search, uh, if you wanna try, you can do it as well. You should open the, the terminal, the console here, and just type H-T-O-P, H-TOP, okay? Let me write it on the chat. With this, you will see the number of threads or cores that your machine has. In our case, it has 16 and uh, almost 64 gigas of memory. You will see that it's challenging for the machine. It will use a lot. So the more we can use, the better. We are going to leave uh, some cores for it to be able to, to do um, system things underneath. So let's just use 12 threads, okay? Important threads, not MPI, threads. Okay, there are two ways of parallelizing. Um, right now, uh, we we are interested in, in this one, as is the one that Iman follows. Okay, so we press on restart. The button here in run mode, and we execute. 
Uh, why did we keep the max tilt as 90? Yeah, you're totally correct. <laughs> the max tilt should be 60. As is the maximum of our, if our tilt images have been acquired with minus 60 to 60, that's, that's how it works. So we just press restart. Yes, we are sure we want to restart. And as we see, <laughs> it starts working. So let's just leave it there. And it should take a while. We might even have to, to look at it after the, the lunch break. But now let's do the, the, the morning break. And after, I will show you how we got the initial model on how you would have to get it on, on real life <laughs> instead of importing it. Hopefully, for most of you, the, or for all of you, <laughs> The subtomogram refinement of, of Eman should be running. It will take long. It might take around an hour. So don't worry. I mean, for the moment, it has um, run 14 minutes for, for me. It will take a while. If, if you want to see, uh, some, for you, the process failed. Oh. Um, okay. Oh, it failed. Why? Okay, I, I go to one machine and see. It might okay. Be no, we we can watch it together. Actually, it failed. It shouldn't have failed. Uh, okay. In you, order to. No, you to, failed as well. Yeah, mine failed. Uh, but I don't understand why. It shouldn't. Uh... Can you click um, mm -hmm. when when the protocol fails? There are yeah. two tabs there. Um, one is the yeah. standard input where you see all messages, and then the arrows are uh, are printed on the other tab. Yeah, so correct. If, if this happens at some time and you need to send us an email about uh, some protocol failing both are very useful the, mm -hmm. the one that uh, patricia is showing and the second one that is the run the stdr i'll press here uh the button under analyze results to make this viewer bigger and here you can see all the the output it prints when when it runs and here the fail this is mostly for, for developers more than for us. Um, mainly what we can do is um, report this to, to developers. So it's, it's fine because you can see in real life how, how this works. Uh, let's try to understand why. Mm. Let's see. Let me check before that what I've selected was the correct thing to, to select. I leave for for you probably in case it's useful, but I wouldn't ah, I cannot have both things. Okay. Uh don't worry. Let me see. Bram is lucky. It's running fine. <laughs> um this um by the way um iman um has done a quick uh, a big effort in, in in tomography and and we found that going for the production release of iman um several things weren't working on our site they, they are they are fixing the stuff and and this the the development version has several fixes that work better for recipient uh, methods. Um, therefore, we are currently using the development version of Eman, and this might be unstable for some reason. 
So I don't know. It might not be the, the reason for this particular case. But um, for tomography, we are, we are installing uh, a recent development version that might be not as stable as the stable version of the other. But it works better for, for the, for example, for the template machine, uh, for other methods, not using square, I think the, the convolutional network picking uh, was fixed to pick on not non-square uh, tomograms. Um, for some reason, Iman reconstruct tomograms uh, in a square, so the, 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 the X and Y are cropped and and we don't always have that other software here can generate as you can see non-square tomograms so that's one of the main reasons okay uh just in case what i have done is to in case that the problem came from restarting the protocol because if you remember i stopped and i pressed restart so what I've done is to relaunch it again. Um, but instead of restarting it, just throwing it from from the beginning. OK, I just uh, you could have copied it. I just created it from. From zero with the same parameters as as we did before. OK, uh, my hunch is that if for Bram is working. Maybe, uh, Bram, did you restart the protocol, or you? I uh, started later. Okay. Yeah, I have that hunch. Uh, the problem is, as it failed. In 12 minutes, it might take a while to make sure if this works or or not. OK, just started it later. So we can try if if this works, because um, it shouldn't be a problem of of resources. Uh, we checked this previously and, and it ran fine. So the only thing that uh, maybe I think could B is is that that he didn't like the restart, but let's let's try that. Do you remember how? What, let's let's do it again together. I so, just, yeah. yeah, I'm wondering that. Uh, I think in the tutorial we didn't change any of the advanced parameters. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, now we have changed something. I think so. Maybe it's really changed. Yeah, it shouldn't be, but maybe. <laughs> Yeah, we changed the max steel. So let's let's do this together again, uh, not changing any of the parameters apart from the mass. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, instead of putting it back, let's do it together again from from the beginning in case there is something that it doesn't like uh, under. Uh, just a fast reminder with Control F. We search for Iman Tomo, refine. It's Iman Tomo subtomogram refinement. We press that one. We want 12 threads. That is what we didn't change before. And as for input tomograms, we want the BWEM subset instead of the full subset. The only the, the already cleaned particles. As a reference, we want the imported volume mod, initial model. OK, it's 50 times 50 times 50, 868 Armstrong pixel. And uh, we'll just keep as <laughs> a normal expert level, not advanced. And in the optimization size, we'll change 500 for 3,000, which is the, the mass of our ribosome. So I already launched mine. If I launched the second one, my machine will crash. So I will just keep it here. But you can press execute. 
okay and and let's see if with that it solves the the problem patricia yes but in advance we only change the max maximum tilt from 90 to 60 right is the only thing that we did right yeah i i know but for some reason it might not have liked it so let's check if if with this solves the the problem it shouldn't harm because as the maximum tilt typed here is more than the maximum tilt that we've got in in our images all the images will be included okay the problem i think it would be uh the reverse that for example here we would see a a 40 or a 30 because in that case uh we will skip some some of the the information so i think the 90 here should do no harm but uh, i'm not an expert on how iman works uh on the low level so if someone knows more correct me without a doubt okay uh let's leave it here uh it's running so we cannot do a lot of Ah, if yours is running, perfect. It might have been the problem of restarting with the uh, with the um, the threads. It could be. I mean, I I cannot explain it either. So okay, let's cross this and see if with this is is enough. Oh no, <laughs> failed in two thirds. Okay, uh... well, this is part of, part, part of the practice as well. Yeah, so, sometimes, <laughs> um, sometimes it's happens. not expected, but uh, uh, we certainly need to look at this if we can do something, or it's maybe demon, I don't know, maybe the machines. Yeah, uh, we just need to, if there's a way to move forward, and, and just that's it, maybe going back to the project sample project and looking from there i don't know patrick you need to improvise probably that's it uh in worst case scenario um i could show you how it would look like in in one of our machines so don't worry you are going to see the the output anyway so if it's fine by you um while this runs let's see how the the initial model would be would have to be created Okay, because remember, once you start to, to process you what you receive or what you have, uh, if you start at tomogram level, would be your tomograms. So there is no way you, you need to, to create an initial model from, from this tomogram by, by zero. So how would you do this? Uh, you have done something similar yesterday with David. Uh, you would have to start uh, with a manual picking. Okay, we are going to do this with Eman again. Uh, this would be if we type Control F and look for Tomo Boxer. Okay, ah, well, first I could show you here. Okay, okay for the moment we have this part of the subset. Of the of the workflow ideally this could finish sometime if not don't panic it's it's okay we'll solve it so let's go with this this would be the the creation of the of our template in order to be able to picking or have a model in order to to refine later as you see we have used the the model in in both places in the picking and in the subtomogram refinement. So it's pretty important to have how an initial model of what you want looks like. So the first thing would be to pick manually the um, particles that you know that look what you want to, to get. Okay, so this would be the protocol itself is called Tomoboxer. Okay, so we'll just type this into the search protocol is the first one. Okay, it's not the CompNet, Tomo Boxer. Iman Tomo, Tomo Boxer. We double click here. 
and our coordinates, our input tomogram will be the tomogram that we have already imported. Okay, so we just press on the lupa and double click on the only tomogram that. Okay, the rest by default, we just run this. This protocol is interactive. Okay, so it will pop up this window that you see here with the tomograms that we've got. If you double click in your tomogram, it should open the, here you've got the viewer of Eman. Okay. Um, not the windows, uh, the input windows I am using. Uh, I'm not sure, cannot you see the Eman window? Yeah, I can see, I can see. That. Not the protocol window. Ah, no, uh, the protocol window, I, I closed it. Um, protocol is here. Okay. Ah, you meant in your own, in your own machine. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, well, it should have opened here. Here we've got it. Okay, it takes some time, as Estella said. So, don't panic it will appear eventually. Um, if you remember how to pick in Eman, is really simple, okay? Basically, this. We use the left click to pick in the bigger window. We have to specify the box size that we want in this panel here. We type 50, which is the box size of the of the ribosome that we had before. And with this um, scroll here, you can move along the tomogram slices. Okay? So basically, left in case that you mispicked some particle, just shift and left click over the, the particle that you want to erase. Okay? Uh, so this should do the trick. You should pick around 50, 50 particles. This should be enough to, to get an initial model. So let's try. Uh, basically, I find the, the particles that I like. They can be in different slices, okay? This one, for example, this one, they will appear here. Okay, there is a particle list, also uh, an, at a separate window that appears with the viewer, and it gets the, the particles that you pick, basically. So imagine if you pick something that you clearly do not want, in case you want to erase it, we just press shift and left click. Oh, you don't see the windows in... Sorry, yeah, box size is 50. By default is 32, but we want 50. Um, if anyone can help, uh, well, Bram just left. Uh, let's hope that he gets back with with the VNC working then. See, once you press 50, the box size changes. If we press 100, let's be a bit exaggerated, the size of the circles increase. So let's keep it with 50 and let's try to pick 50 ribosomes. Okay, so in case uh, you have problems, uh, just tell me, but otherwise I can just mute myself and wait like 10 minutes or, or so until I, I believe that many of you have, have finished. Uh, it shouldn't be complicated. Uh, 
I'm Patricia. Um, yeah. How to change the layer of the uh, yeah of, of our Otomo? Um, yeah. Um, do you see a, a a scroll bar that is uh, on the lower part of the viewer? A scroll bar that is um, down on the right. It's bluish. Yes, thank you. There. You just move and, as I said, uh, pick around 50 ribosomes that you like. Uh, you will see here how, how they look. So they don't have to be perfect either. Remember, this is just an initial model. But the closer the initial model is to, to the reality, the better it will be. And the easier it will be to, to refine later. So don't uh, obsess with clicking on the center, but it will make your life easier. The, the nicer your ribosomes look here. Um, I've got 28. Let's pick on different slices. Uh, I don't remember after picking how you save the particles. Okay. Uh, I know it sounds uh, risky, but just close the window. <laughs> if you close the window, uh, it will ask you if you want to save the, the particles. Okay. Yeah, uh, in order to pick, I made this uh, slice. It's easy, just left click to pick, shift plus left click, uh, click to unpick uh, a particle that you don't like. I specify 50 instead of the 32 that comes by default. That should do the trick. Uh, yeah, to move set, you can do it with this scroll here. Let me show you indirect but if i click here and with it go up or down it will move with me okay and if you see the the boxes will will appear there and the different slices where i have picked more or less all of them look like this for a while for everyone to to have it easier and if you have don't hesitate to unmute yourself so to use the the chat the display freezes mm. uh, could someone try to, to help Bram? It could be for how many threads did you put on the, the refine? Because maybe the, the machine is suffering from inside 12. Okay, the problem then. Mm. Is anyone else having the same problem?
Okay. We'll just give a bit more in case someone needs more time to pick. But if you want, like, uh, we can wait a couple of minutes, like 12. Ah, close to safe. Yeah, close to safe. Actually, let's close. And I should have to be where somewhere. See, here. Status done. Okay, this is my tomogram list of my Iman uh, picking. So I just close. And yes, I wish to save the protocol output. So important, select yes. Let's hope so. Um, how to close? Uh, yeah. You have to just uh, the Iman viewer. I'll do it again. Uh, I'll just I I don't want to restart it. I'll just launch this. See the important um, window to close in order to save is the tomogram list. Okay, so if you are with the viewer opened, you can just close it. Uh, it will be okay. Trust me. <laughs> if you close it, it won't ask. But here, once you close the tomogram list, it will ask, do you wish to save protocol output? This one is the important one to say yes. Otherwise, you will lose the, the particles you picked. And if we refresh, it should appear this. Um, OK, as I saved it twice, I have two sets of coordinates, but don't. It's, it's OK. I mean, it was just for, for showing you. You should have only one. OK, so now that we have our coordinates picked, we would have to do the, the same as before. We actually have it here, okay? We have picked, we have picked, we have a set of 3D coordinates. Now we have to extract the tomograms that correspond to those coordinates. So we would just run a vectorial extraction. In fact, we can just right click here and press copy. Do not have to, to look for the, the protocol again. We have it here, so we do not have to, to find it again. We press copy. And the only thing that we have to have into an account is that right now, as it is a copy from this one, the input coordinates are these ones, the ones from Iman Tomo template matching. We do not want these ones here. We would like to use the ones that we have just picked from the Tomo boxer. So, We'll throw these ones to the bin and press on the lupa. OK, here you will have your coordinates from the template matching and your coordinates from the Tomo Boxer. We want the ones from the Tomo Boxer. So we just select this. And it's exactly the same as the other one, so we just press execute. And you slow, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, let's repeat the, the extraction part. Okay, um, so far, imagine all of us should have finished the, the picking of Feman with the Tomo Boxer, okay, the, the, the interactive part. We should have our around 50 
coordinates picked in, in Eman. So now what we want to do is, okay, 30, 30 is fine. See, the, the only thing that it will change, remember this is an initial model. So we, we are not going to reach three Armstrong with these 30 particles. We, we just want a, an initial reference of particles that we know that are correct or that are ribosomes for it to have an idea of what does it have to look at in, in the refinement. So it's fine. Uh, but in order to be able to work with them, we have to extract them from the tomogram. Okay, we have the coordinates. Uh, the same way that it worked uh, at the beginning of the day, if, if you remember, we just have to, to extract them. So we will use the Dynamo Vectorial Extraction Protocol. Uh, what I did here is um, I copied the, the protocol, okay? Um, Cypion has a functionality that if you press on a box and right click over the box, you can see a lot of different options here. You can edit the protocol, you can change its name, you can copy it, you can delete it. We want to copy it, okay? Because we want to do exactly the same as we had before. We just press copy and it will open a, a protocol that is exactly the same as the other one with the difference of that in the name, it will say copy. Okay, but the parameters are exactly the same as the ones that we have already selected. So it's it comes in quite handy when you have to divide your, when you have large data sets and you have to work with subsets and you want to do the same for the different subsets, you just copy the, do the protocol once and copy it for the rest, changing the input for what you're going to look. So right here, as we want to extract the, the, the same way, we just copied the, the protocol from the other side, but uh, we want to change the input. We do not want to use the, the template matching. That's it. Input will be our picked emantomo, which as you can see here, is the one called Tomo Boxer. We select it. And that will do the trick. The parameters are the same as the other ones. You just press execute. Great. And with this, if we analyze the results of what it has extracted, we will see that these are the subtomograms that we picked. Okay, the 50 or 51 or 30 subtomograms that we picked are extracted from, from the tomogram. And if we double click in one of the images, we will see that this actually has uh, three dimensions. Okay, we can move along Z. So right now we've got the subtomograms extracted. Uh, now we would like to continue. Actually, the, the next steps are going to be pretty similar to the ones we have here. Okay, we, because what we want to do, um, convert this extraction into a small refinement. Okay, we want to, to with these, these particles, do like a mini workflow like this one to have an initial model. Basically, it's a, a very rough um, subtomogram refinement. So the steps that we are going to follow are the same ones that, that we've got here. So basically, we will start with the the subtomogram, um, the subtomo projection. Okay, we can practice the copy. We we copy it again. The one from the main workflow. We click on XMIP subtomo projection. Right click, copy. And we change the input volumes 
for the ones that we just extracted, they will file the window here. The first one that appears is the last one that was created. So you will always have uh, the most handy protocol, the last one that you made. So always the, the first one that appears here is, is going to do the trick here. So we select this and we, as we copied it from the other one, we just have to, to execute. Okay, so far so good. Great. We execute this. And how is this going? Well, it hasn't crashed yet, which is good news. It has done 30 minutes. It goes, <laughs> it seems uh, he didn't like the restart for, for some reason. We, we will have to check that. For the moment, it's running, so maybe you, you will be able to see how this works in, in real life. We lost Patricia. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, she's, she's yes, coming Barbara. back. Yeah. She's okay. coming back. Barbara. She she's got a problem with the connection. Okay. It won't make it. Hi, I'm back. Sorry, I lost the connection. I hope you didn't miss me too much. Uh, <laughs> great. So um, just in case, I'm going to stop sharing and share again because I'm not sure if it might have frozen. Okay. It should have done the trick. Great. Ah. Uh, Let's see. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> but let's hope it lasts. OK, so let's continue what we had. Now we have our projections. So now we would have to do the 2D classification again. We would just click on the box, right click, copy. And we want to come. Sorry, Patricia. Um, yeah. So just to understand. So uh -huh. since we are projecting here, in the yeah. in the worst case that we picked only ribosomes with the same orientation, let's say this is not going to work, right? So uh, we are meant to have different orientations in our manual picking. Right? Yeah, well, the the trick of the 2D classification is to have different projections of the same view of the same image. So the sum of the projections should create the 3D model. But uh, I believe it would be really complicated to 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 have ribosomes only in, in one view. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just uh... I'm trying to understand. <laughs> but I mean, correct me, anyone, if I think I think that would be. Uh, okay. So so far so good. Let's continue with this. Uh, we want the subtoma projection of the the thing that we were doing before. Great. We've got this here and basically same as before with different different inputs. Okay. This will be very fast because we are only using 50 particles. Uh, up till here, it's been the same. Okay, we press execute, it's just the same. Now uh, 
is when the thing changes a little bit, okay? Because for constructing the initial model, we are going to use a protocol from SPA. Again, uh, it's called Transac. Maybe some of you know about it. Uh, basically, what it that it helps to to build initial models. Okay, please. Oh, it failed. More. Direct things. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Number of assignment classes. Okay. Well, with this, you can see, see, Tamara finished. So there are some. Okay. Maybe the problem was here. I pressed uh, stable core analysis, yes. Uh, I might have misclicked somewhere, but let's just restart it and run. Yes. Okay, so how does RANSAC work? RANSAC will take up our projections, okay, and from them, it will iterate and construct the, the 3D initial model. Okay, so it will receive the, it failed again. It doesn't like me. Um, any projection. And yes. I think, I think you have to put just for classes because we have uh, just a few particles. In the okay. presentation, it says 10, but in the tutorial, it said 4. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Sorry. Have 50 particles. So. Thank you, Estrella. Okay. Let's see if the third one is the good one. <laughs> and. Yeah, it finished. There you go. If we analyze what we've got. And we um, is it now bad that mine finished with uh, 10 classes? Should I worry or should I just be happy that it was able to? Probably you um, had more particles than Patricia. How many particles did you pick? Uh, 53. Uh, it Tamara, are you sure that you changed the input and you are using the particles from the Iman Tomo boxer, not from the template matching? Yes. Mm, okay, if if someone can go to, to Tamara's machine and, and check. Maybe just with that two more particles is enough to do yeah. more this. <laughs> not sure. But it's not a problem, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. You get uh, some results, so you will get uh, hmm. 10, 10 averages instead yeah. of four. I mean, fine. the only difference should be that it has divided your subset into more um, groups, into more classes. But in the end, what we have is basically the same. I mean, the part we have, we know that they are good. So really, the classification here is not that important. Because from here, the only thing that we want are the, the averages, okay, that are what we are going to use as a model for the RANSAC. So if you remember how to select the, the particles, the, the subsets, it was with left click and with the control, keep clicking on, on the ones on, we want all of them because all of them are good. Okay, the only thing is that here, instead of subsetting particles, we are going to subset averages. Okay, the, the, bo the button is different. We are going to call this just averages. Okay. We click this and it should be running. Finished. Great. Uh, what we have here is exactly the same as, as on the other one because we have just selected the 
the averages of the classification. Okay. Here we had classes, and here we have our average of the different classes. So with this, we are ready to launch the RAMSAC. Okay. We are going to find it again with the control F RAMSAC, as it sounds. R A N C A C from X Smith 3. So as you can see, it needs averages. So this is why we used the, the classification and extracted that subset. So it should be the same. I think it was Tamara that it worked for you with the same classes? Yeah. But it's a good deal. Uh, yeah, this I because I'm the averages. Um, uh, okay, me? Okay, I, I'm, I was creating the, the averages class, classes, uh -huh. and I don't know what have you done after that. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you have created the averages, you should have this subset of set of averages, right? is a subset you you will have yes. to call it as as you want okay so now we will just look for a protocol called ransack as it sounds ransack and i just double clicked it here okay Okay, so as you see, the only thing that it needs is an input average. So we are going to give it what went outside from this classification. And with this, it will work inside and create different types of initial model from the one we can pick, which interests us the most. Okay. Uh, as it doesn't really know what you are looking for, it will just uh, try different things. And from the output, it will give us different outputs. Let's just run this. Let's give four here in parallel threads four, because we have 16. So we are already using 12 with the refine. Let's use the other four with the ransack. Okay, so threads for input averages and symmetry C1. We execute. And this will give us uh, a number of, of options to use as our initial model. Okay, so they will look quite similar if I'm not confused. And with this, we will only have to, to pick the, the output that convinces us the most, and we would be ready to have our initial and real model to, to work with what would be the, the real workflow from, from the beginning, right? Instead of importing it as we just did, we, in fact, if you see the output of these the, the, this import belongs to a, a ransack that we previously made. So here we would, uh, in real life, be ready to, to start with all of this workflow that we've done before. Ransack computes a 3D from the average view. That's it. Your ransack failed. Uh, could someone look the, the machine of Francisco, to check the, I will open the, the parameters, maybe. Thank you, Pablo. Basically, we need to, to give it the input. And yes, as Bram said, it computes a 3D from the average views. And it shouldn't take long. It might take like five minutes or then in worst case, I'm not sure if the septomogram refinement will finish before lunch, but I'm sure that after it will have.
the refinement process, the, the, um, it should last around an hour, but it depends on, on the machine. For these particles and these machines, uh, the tests that we have done were around an hour. So they should be about to finish. It was a pity that the other one failed because it should have finished right now. And well, also while this finishes, um, it is important to say as well that remember all of this that we have done is at bin four. It's at bin four, uh, eight Armstrong. So we wouldn't be able to achieve a, a, a really high resolution with this small data set once we finished the refinement that been for in real life what we would do is to extract again the particles at the bin two and continue iterating to to try to improve the resolution of, of what we get and little by little go cleaning the the data set that we have and keep only the the particles that are more convenient for for the data that we are interested in but here we didn't have time to to show you how a real uh, workflow looks like it's more a, a toy data set but i think that it's uh enough to give you a general overview of how this would be basically it would be uh now we have refined we could uh move to bin two and then classify again, keep the good particles, refine again, see what's the resolution that we are achieving. Uh, again, in best case scenario, uh, keep on refining until we reach to, to an unpinned uh, tomogram to, to particles in bin one with the resolution as how they are extracted from the microscope image. And, um, try to to get the the best resolution possible because uh, the more you bin the faster you work but the lower the resolution you get yeah this shouldn't this is around it will take around 10 minutes has everyone got to run the ransack Great, because if if you want, uh, what we can do is um, watch it fastly after after lunch. I can to you so that uh, we give the time of processing and, and and so. Or if you have any questions or or something because it might take still like five minutes or so or we can wait a bit whatever you prefer But I can spoil the ransack faith. Four. Mm. Okay, or if someone could check the parameters, I can open them again to for you to see if it responds here. Great, thank you, Anna. Um, just saying in case it's the case for someone else, um, if if what happened to Federico is in the CL2D, 
if uh, at some point you 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 patricia you said to do not do the core analysis mm -hmm. and it seems if you don't ask cl2d to do the core analysis then the output is like empty there are no images which is weird and then you cannot continue later on you will everything will fail because the images are not there so review the output because in the case of federico i'm not sure if someone else uh, did the same you have oh. uh, a set without the dimensions that that's usually wrong if you if you see a set of averages or particles and the dimensions are missing that's a sign of something went wrong obviously cl2d shouldn't have generated an output that way but uh, we, we can't review that <laughs> It's a tricky question, Luca, because um, a minimum number of particles, uh, I don't really have an answer for that. I think it depends on the data set and on the type of data. I mean, if your particles are big, you will need less uh, particles to have a good initial model or the the smaller the particles the the bigger the number of particles that you will need in order to to get to see something but it is very difficult to to answer <laughs> oh ransack finish i see from Bran. great this should be about to finish Only Yeah, uh, by the way, there are three different files uh, after the 2D classification. These files, uh, I think I might see them here. After 2D classification, there are three different files. He means the output. They are like the stable core and all that. Uh, if Carlos is around, he might be the best person to explain. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's, he's around. Uh, as far as yeah, I, I am, I am. Okay. Then the best person is you to understand the output of CL2D. Yeah. So there are three outputs. The first one is just the raw classification. So images are assigned to representatives. Then we have the, the core and the stable core. So the core is uh, somehow we measure how far each one of the images is from the representative. And the, the way to measure is the, uh, the Mahalanobis distance for those of you who are curious about it. And, and then we try to identify outliers with, with that distance. And then the, the stable core is those images in the core with a further analysis that is, uh, CL2D is a hierarchical algorithm, so uh, it starts classifying in, in a few classes and then uh, these classes are subdivided into smaller classes. And then, uh, but, but each image is allowed to go to any, to any representative. So the stable core is two images belong to the stable core if they have been all the time together. Because sometimes if you have uh, outliers, they are jumping all the time from one class to the other. So we detect these jumpers and, and remove them. And I don't know why it, it doesn't produce an output when you don't complete the core, because in, in principle it should. Well, maybe there's other reason. I don't know. I just asked to compute the core and it worked. Uh, yeah. Great. Thank you, Carlos. So I see some of the, the refinements are finishing. That's wonderful news. Uh, I hope this one finishes fast. Either way, as the ransack has finished, we can come and see it. Uh, 
fastly. We just click on the RAMSAC and as always, the button of analyze results, we press here and we will see the different volumes. So in, in order to see them, we can open them with Chimera. We can open Chimera with this button here is a little hidden, but uh, this selecting one of the, let me try. If I open all of them at the same time, maybe this is too ambitious, but I feel brave. It will open, ah, it opens only one. Okay, don't worry. Uh, well, let me explain this then. You have the output of the RAMSAC. If we analyze results, we will see the 10 options that the, um, the RAMSAC is offering us of 3D initial model, okay? So if we go into one of them and press on the Chimera button here, on the up part of the window, uh, it will display Chimera as we saw before. And uh, just as we saw before, we can play with the threshold until we get something that we like, okay? We can use the scroll of the mouse to go up, uh, to go closer or farther in our ribosome. And this would be what, what we've got. Okay, so once we find one that convinces us, how would we keep it? I mean, it's possible and very probable that look very much the same because after all the the particles are all uh, manually picked and we picked ones that we liked and uh, are similar between them so in order to create our volume from here we would just have to press the bottom volumes select one of the volumes and press volumes this way it will create a new set of volumes with one element uh, as far as I know, they are not ranked. They they are there, and you, as a user that know knows what you are looking for, will pick the one that looks the most similar to to what you're looking for. It's uh, I think it works like that. And with this, we we could just press volumes and select the the volume that we want as. Yeah, sure, I, I will repeat this right now. In fact, cancel. Uh, I will repeat this. I will repeat it fast. Uh, if you can just watch my screen because I am already stepping over the, the pause for, for lunch. So just stay with me and I will show you fastly and this way uh, you won't miss your, your time for it. Um, okay, so we are here, the ransack finished. So let's just uh, analyze what we got. We press on analyze and we see that we've got our 10 volumes of initial model as it's set here. They are type volume as what we imported at first and they are 10 items. Here we can see how they look like if you can see, most of them look pretty much the same because all of them come from just 50 pictures. Uh, it's simple. We will select one that we like and press on the button here, which belongs to Chimera X. If we press here, we will open Chimera X. It takes a little. And there it goes. Okay, so with the 
scroll button of the mouse, we can go inside or outside our ribosome and with this bar here on this down right part of the image we can play with the threshold to get a, a ribosome closer to, to noise or, or just less signal. Um, you can play with the left yeah, with the left click of, of, the, of the mouse. And if you're convinced of, of this as an initial model, you would just close Chimera. And with this one selected, press here on volumes. This way, you would create a new set of volumes with one element. You just say initial model. For example, and this should create down here, there you go, a subset with our volume. And there you would have it. Uh, refinement hasn't finished yet. Um, doesn't influence the results of the, uh, uh, I think he was talking to, to Anna. Okay, you're welcome, Marie Jose. Great, yeah, I don't know how much the, the refinement will will take, so I would do now the, the pause for, for lunch and see if, if later it finishes. So this would be, all and thank you very much. <laughs>